My name is Mabel Melt and I am a member of the Solihull Christian Fellowship. My reading will be from Luke 1 verse 26 to 35. Angel Gabriel speaks to Mary. The passage will tell us four things about Mary. The facts of Mary's life, the fear in Mary's heart, the wonder in Mary's mind, and the submission in Mary's spirit. Let's get right into it. Verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Pause. Mary was a virgin, betrothed, but not yet married. Betrothed. I love those English words. It is suggested that back then, young women were engaged for a whole year before they got married. Now, this gives us insights to Mary's age. She was a teenager. She was very young. Hubby-to-be, Joseph, was a descendant of the greatest Israel's King David. Mary's lineage and ancestry is a bit more complex, but let's look into her soul. Verse 29. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Mary was greatly troubled, I would imagine, taken aback, as would we when presented with something new or something strange. Our norm is disrupted, little alarms go off in our heads. Now, while this is normal and healthy to a degree, there's also a dangerous and sinful kind of fear that can grip and control us. For example, a fear of death or a fear of our spouse leaving, or the fear of sickness, or even the fear of not being able to pay bills. Whenever fear lives in us, instead of it being short-lived or a momentary reaction, we become warped. Then we react out of fear instead of out of faith. I think that Mary accepted Gabriel's fear not at face value. Why? Because I'm guessing he had a big physique. His physique was grand, holy peace and calmness around him, a halo. His voice would be reassuring and calming. Hmm. Verse 31. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? I am a virgin. Now that's the wonder in Mary's mind. How will this be? I know not a man. Oh, that's the old English again. I know not a man. I love it. God is no respecter of persons, but this here, I reckon, is a one-time miracle. (laughs) How will God accomplish this? This was supernatural. This was a miracle. Our responses could be, yeah, right. Mm, Nah. Can't happen. Or prove it. Our responses could be, wow, that's amazing. How will that happen? A response of wonder and faith. I think Mary had the response of wonder and faith. 
Should we question God? Well, Mary did. Now, she asked how. Questions and the exploration of their answers contribute to our faith, even if the questions themselves go unanswered. Now, Mary's questions came from faith, not doubt. Now, here's a teenager facing misunderstanding, rejection from her family, from her hubby-to-be, the community, her friends, and yet, and yet she agreed. Sometimes it takes great turmoil in our souls, in our lives, to come to a place of submission. But come to it. We must. Verse 35 reads, The angel Gabriel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. With this single verse, we have the basis to why the Christian faith is centered in the triune God. All three persons are present in God whom we confess as the Most High, the Son of God who is Jesus Christ, and the overshadowing presence that Mary felt, which is the Holy Spirit. I hope you're blessed. Amen.